Hi there everyone, and welcome to another dinosaur video. Today, we're talking about de-extinction. Now I know what you're thinking. Jeff, you've seen all the Jurassic Park movies. You know that when you play God, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, and this happens. I really don't care. I want to see dinosaurs. I don't care if people get eaten. Whatever. That'd be cool. I mean, you guys probably don't have to worry because the uh, DNA uh, degrades fully at around 6.8 million years. So we're about 59 million years off. So there's no way that we're going to see dinosaurs in our lifetime. However, there are ways that scientists are still trying to make dinosaurs. There's a process called backwards evolution, or basically scientists will take the embryos of birds, like chickens, is what they're working on right now, and they will turn off specific genes and turn on specific genes to make them grow bigger, have tails and teeth and stuff like that. Basically what KFC does with your chickens to make them grow bigger and provide more meat. Except they're making dinosaurs instead of food, which is better. Now, this way doesn't exactly give us dinosaurs because what we're making aren't actual dinosaurs. We're just basically creating things that look like dinosaurs. Uh, so it doesn't really count to me. It's just a lazy way of going about it. However, there have been some very interesting discoveries in paleontology within the last uh, 12 years or so. Uh, for example, paleontologists started crushing up dinosaur bones and in the uh, one of the bones of a tyrannosaur that they found they discovered empty blood vessels. These blood vessels had survived literally millions and millions and millions of years of fossilization and decomposition and everything and these blood vessels were still intact. There was no blood in it, obviously, because of the 6.8 million year decomposition rate, but they were, the vessels, completely intact, still inside the bone, which, you know, a lot of paleontologists thought couldn't be possible given this long of a period of time. Also in 2007, a completely, or partially mummified Edmontosaurus was discovered where the outer layer of skin on one side was completely intact and you could see all the scales and how they were built and even the coloration. So we know what an Edmontosaurus would look like and here's a reconstruction of one. But then there was another discovery in 2017 uh, when a fully mummified uh, species of Notosaur was discovered and the entire thing was completely 100% mummified and we know 100% what it looks like. It's not partially uh, mummified, it's fully mummified. And even the insides are still intact and can be taken apart and everything. Again, no viable DNA or blood vessels or anything, but it's still a dinosaur exactly how it would have been millions and millions of years ago. So, down the line, that could be super important. And I think if any sort of reconstruction is going to happen with dinosaurs, it's going to be from those three areas. But as of this moment in time, it is completely 100% impossible to bring a dinosaur back to life. However, it's not completely out of the woods for Pleistocene era animals and earlier, like as of extinct animals yesterday to come back to life. In 1996, scientists cloned the first animal ever. It was a sheep by the name of Dolly. I think it lived about like 25 years or something like that. But it was the first fully cloned animal ever. You know, we took the, the DNA of this animal and we inserted it into the nucleus of an egg and we implanted it into a sheep. And then, boom, out popped this clone sheep, exactly the same as uh, the one it was cloned from, obviously. Now, a few years later, in 2003, 
uh, those scientists took it a step further and decided that we are going to clone our first extinct animal. Now what they did was they took uh, DNA from the somewhat recently extinct Pyrenean Ibex and they did the same thing. A lot of the, the uh, clones did not survive to birth uh, and only one did. Uh, it was a sheep Ibex half and half that it actually survived in and uh, it was born and only lived about 10 minutes uh, before it died because uh, its lungs weren't developed properly. Uh, but we succeeded in de-extinction and that's 100% proof right there. So that really interested scientists and in 2013 National Geographic along with a few other uh, corporations and stuff like that came together in Washington DC and they had an entire conference to discuss the possibility of de-extinction. And they came together with certain categories of is it was if it was possible to bring back these animals, do we have the, the DNA and the, the ability to take things we have now and create this animal, bring it back? Uh, do we have habitat for it? Is it is it possible to be reintroduced into the wild? And the third one was is it necessary uh, to be reintroduced? Like, did it serve a pivotal function in its natural habitat, or did is it is it like uh, a very popular animal that people really want to see? And these scientists came up with 24 different animals that they would start with. And uh, I have a list of all the animals here. So we have the Carolina parakeet, the Cuban macaw, the aurochs, the dodo, dusky seed side sparrow, the labrador duck, the heath hen, the ivory-billed woodpecker, the imperial woodpecker, the great auk, the woolly mammoth, the mastodon, Moa, Elephant Bird, Passenger Pigeon, Pyrenean Ibex, which was previously uh, de-extinctified, like I said, back in uh, 2003, the Kawaga, the Smilodon, the Yangtze River Dolphin, the Thylacine, Stellar's Sea Cow, Caribbean Monk Seal, the Huya, and the Moho. Now, a lot of these are really far off from being brought back to life. Yeah, I, of course that was in 2013, it's 2019 now, and we're getting closer to uh, bringing some of these creatures back to life, but at the same time there hasn't been much progress uh, because we're still trying to perfect the cloning process. Now in 2007 they discovered a fully mummified frozen baby mammoth in the permafrost in Siberia, I think it was. And now they have the DNA of mammoths. And that was also one of the other things that brought this de-extinction uh, topic to the forefront of science. And that is kind of like the main focus right now is bringing back the mammoth. In fact, they have an entire area in Siberia that they have uh, created. It's called Pleistocene Park. Basically what they've done uh, is they've reverted this entire area back to the way it used to be 10,000 years ago so that we can reintroduce mammoths into the wild. Because what mammoths used to do is, um, you see, Siberia used to not be this big forest tundra uh, wasteland, but it used to be open grasslands and stuff like that. And the mammoths and all the other uh, mammals that lived back then helped keep it to that um, to be that way and so what they've they've reverted everything back and they've reintroduced certain animals like the horses and the bison and all that stuff that used to live in that area and uh, they've made a viable habitat for the mammoths and it's fully functional and ready to go and all the animals are there except for the mammoths but they're like if mammoths were here tomorrow 
they'd be ready for it. Um, it is going to take a number of years. I think back in 2013 they did say it would take until our grandchildren are alive. And then last I heard it would be another 20 years or another 30 years. Or, you know, some people even said six years before they even start trying to implant mammoth into actual elephants and stuff like that. So it's definitely within our lifetime that we will be able to see a mammoth. Uh, but still that science isn't quite there yet. And that's it for today. So um, hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave links down in the description below if you really want to read up on de-extinction and look at that list and read all about the conference that National Geographic had in Washington DC back in 2013 because it's really fascinating. And uh, maybe if I find some interesting videos I'll, I'll link them down there as well for you to watch. So yeah, we'll see you next week with another dinosaur video. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Or don't. Thank you.